Hello, everyone. My name is Nicole Conte, and I'm the host of the Sweet Success Podcast. And I'm joined by Erica Wilson, our therapist from the Olive Branch Counseling Center, and Taylor Posey, our life coach from 4031 Life Coaching and Consulting. Hey, in Nicole. Alabaster, we're look, we are Alabama girls. Yes. And we are going to talk to you about all things mental health, anything yes. bothering us, affecting us, anything bothering you or affecting you, reach out to us and let yes. us know. Yes, for sure. Let we would love know. to hear. This one was also brought mm-hmm. up um, to us by someone requested. And we're going to talk about fear of the unknown. Yes. Which we're, we've talked anxiety before, yeah. right? A little bit different. Kind of yeah. can go hand in hand maybe, but we'll, we'll kind of... We'll flesh all that out. So yeah. tell me about fear of the unknown. <coughs> Taylor. <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> that was. She's clearing her throat. Clearing my it, was throat. A, it was a frog. Was like, <laughs> to start talking. Oh, wow. She, she's, she's clearing her throat to Excuse get ready. Excuse me. Yes. Are you, do you feel fear, ready now? I feel ready. She's, you feel ready now. I have okay. fear she, of the unknown that it might happen She's passionate about this topic. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so fear of the unknown. So the main thing, um, and I, I was sharing with them before we actually started, again, this is a topic and this is something that can happen at any age. Uh, with me working in the schools, I have a lot of students that will come to me and even though they don't say, I have fear of the unknown, it is obvious that they are worried or concerned about things that may or may not happen in their future. Um, grades are definitely one of them. Fear of, you know, what if I don't pass this test? Or what's going to happen if I, you know, get an F on my report card? Will I be able to still play sports? So really just, and it could it can happen once again at any age. And even if people don't verbally say, I have fear of the unknown, just people wondering and not knowing what may or may not happen in their future. Um, The biggest thing that I've seen, especially in middle school, uh, are things when your family changes. Um, For example, if you have one student that lives with one parent and maybe the parent is getting remarried, um, you know, there's fear of the unknown with, you know, if the person that my parent is marrying lives out of state, am I going to have to move out of state and leave everything that I know and love? When am I going to be able to see my other biological parent again? So some of that, like you said, does go hand in hand with anxiety. But a lot of it is, too, just the brain overthinking. And, you know, we've talked in previous podcasts about taking things day by day. But that's hard for some people to do, especially when you're younger and you don't know what may or may not happen. Um, Thinking ahead can be very scary uh, when you don't know what to expect. Yeah. So how how would this be different than... Erica, from from a therapist perspective of anxiety versus fear of the unknown. So fear of the unknown is, um, it, it's very much like anxiety, and it's the lack of control that you you that you just don't have. Mm-hmm. So trying to control a situation or an environment that you have no control over. Um, the fear of, am I going to get that job? Mm -hmm. Well, you you don't truly have control over that. So dwelling on it and having excessive worries of that, maybe the fear of, okay, I'm not going to get this, or I don't know if I'm going to get this job. um, It will definitely cause some anxious symptoms. Again, doesn't mean you have an anxiety disorder. Right. But the fear of the unknown comes from the lack of control. And there are a lot of things you can do to try to prevent that. And that is trying to not dwell on things that you don't have any control over, such as the weather. We have no control over the weather. I know the weather can forecast out to at least 10 days. And I know a lot of clients who have uh, fear of weather, you know, Mm. what's the weather going to be, especially if it's a bad weather week or a weather day. Um, but the truth is, is they can't control that. But what happens is the anticipation (laughs) of what that bad weather day is going to look like and the fear of the unknown of what that day is going to turn out like causes a lot of anxiety symptoms. Mm -hmm. Um, the racing heart, the racing thoughts, the sweaty palms, um, not being able to catch their breath. There is a difference. You just have to remember that the fear of the unknown is the lack of control of something that you're that you're thinking about. Am I going to graduate on time? Mm-hmm. I don't know. 
um, are you doing your work to graduating on time? That's the questions you would need to ask yourself because that's what you can control. You can control how much work you're doing right. to graduate on time. Yeah. Or as an adult, the fear of, you know, is, is my child going to make it to high school? You don't know when they're five years old, eight years old, however, um, you don't know. You, you, you can't control that. You can do the best you can as a parent mm-hmm. to parent them, to educate them, to get them to high school. But the fear of the unknown of that situation is you don't. You don't know when they're children. Um, or as an adult, am I going to get married? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, but that, again, the fear of the unknown, if you sat in that and only thought of that and focused on that, that's not doing anything for you because you can't control that situation or that thought. Mm -hmm. And that thought pattern, if that just recycles in your brain over and over again, you are going to end up feeling anxious. You may end up having an anxiety attack because those thoughts are just recycling over and over again. You're not doing anything about controlling what you can. Um, Dating can help you get married if you're dating and you find the right one. Educating your kids is going to help them get through school. Educating yourself is going to help you get through school or get that job. Those are the things you can control to help you Mm -hmm. prevent fearing the unknown. Doing the things you can control are the things that you know. Yeah. The things you can't control live in the unknown. Yep. I think you hit the nail on the head. It it is a matter of control. Um, And with one of my clients that I was recently talking to, uh, another middle school student, was just worried about going to the next grade. What if I fail? And my question was, have you ever failed? Have you ever made a bad grade? Well, no, I've always made straight A's. So why in the world are you going to fail all of a sudden? I don't know. What if it's just too hard? So those are things, and I think as adults, as we get older, we are sometimes able to rationalize a little bit more and we can bring ourselves back down to earth like, okay, like how realistic is this? I might be worried about it, but... Let me center myself. Let me bring myself back. But I think a lot of times with younger people, especially, you know, elementary age, even when you're in college, that fear is very real uh, because sometimes you still don't have those skills to be able to say, okay, what can I control about this situation? And even with the client I was just talking about, we made a list like, what have you done this year in the grade that you're in to be able to make straight A's. We made a list of everything that this client was doing. And then I said, okay, so you've made a list. These are the things you've done to maintain straight A's. We just have to carry that into next year. And even us writing it down and talking it through, I think by the time my client left, she was able to say, okay, yeah, like I I might still have that thought process as my next, you know, grade level comes up. But in reality, and I made her keep the list, in reality, I'm worried because it's something new. But if I continue to do the things that I've done that have helped me be successful, I'm going to be okay. Um, So I do think it, it is just a matter of, you know, maybe even listening to other people, other people's experiences can affect, you, you know, your fear of the unknown because they haven't had a great experience. Um, but it is a matter of control and you cannot control what the future holds. But sometimes, you know, like Erica said, there are steps that you can take to ensure that I continue to get straight A's. If I want to get married, and maybe you may or may not get married, but you're not going to get married just sitting at the house watching TV. <laughs> maybe you do need to get on a dating app. Right. Uh, is my kid going to go to high school? Well, I mean, if you don't ever work with them and they're, you know, as dumb as they were when they were four years old, then they probably won't go. <laughs> so you do, you ha- it's a reality. Yeah. You do have control of Maybe I don't know how to do this new math, but I can get them a tutor. Right. Maybe I can put them into a program that's going to help them. What can so you control? So what can you control and what can you do to be able to help yourself out so that the fear does not overtake you? And I would say that the fear of the unknown, uh, fear in general, falls more into the line of like a phobia, not a disorder. So think of people who have the, a fear of flying. Mm-hmm. Um, the fear of flying is the fear of the unknown if the plane is going to land. And that, again, goes back to, I don't trust this captain or pilot right. to land this plane safely. I have no control 
when I'm 30,000 feet in the air. So I fear if we're going to land. I don't know if we will or not. Again, can come with anxiety, doesn't mean you have anxiety. Um, but there is a fear of flying, which is more of a phobia. Um, my, my sister has a true phobia, uh, a fear of elevators. Mm-hmm. Um, again, it doesn't necessarily mean everybody wants to think fear of elevators has to do with claustrophobia or being claustrophobic. And that's not her case. Hers is the fear of, of the unknown. Is this elevator going to get stuck? Mm -hmm. If it gets stuck, what do I do? So I, you know, she and I talk about it a lot and it's a very real fear. All these fears are real. Um, There, there's some sort of realness to it. There's some sort of exposure that they've had to it. But you know, for my sister, she's never been stuck in an elevator. She's, she's never experienced what that fear may be like. But for her, it's very real. If, if she's stuck in that moment and that elevator door doesn't open within a second, the unknown for her is, okay, I don't know what's going to happen next. Mm-hmm. And so she has no control over that. But what she does control is she doesn't get in an elevator. Mm-hmm. So that is not going to help her experience what it's like to get in an elevator and not get stuck. Yeah. Or vice versa, be in an elevator it gets stuck, but it opens safely and see that she's fine. And that goes for all of the fears of the unknown. If we're, we, if we have a fear of flying and we have determined we're going to control the situation by never flying out of the country or to a different state, we'll never get to experience that because mm-hmm. we have controlled that by saying, well, I'm just not going to do it. Um, there's some certain, there's situations that we're afraid of. You know, I know women who, Uh, that I counseled that want to have a child so badly, but they have a fear of being pregnant. Mm -hmm. And, and so you can't do both unless you adopt. But if you true an adoption is great, but if you truly want to have your own child, you have to work through that fear Mm -hmm. because that fear is real. um, But it's the unknown of Mm -hmm. it, especially if it's your first child, the unknown of what comes with that. Right. So you, you can't always control your situations and your environment. And a lot of times it comes from, if you ask them, you know, what happened to you? Why do you fear that? Do you have anxious parents? Was that fear instilled upon you at some point um that's usually the key is to find where that fear came from is there's a line somewhere that it started you know maybe it's movies maybe the things that these kids are watching now there's true fears there like my sister again never been stuck in an elevator has she seen a movie where there's been a dramatic elevator crash or an elevator stuck yes for sure if that happened when she was a kid it's stuck and so it's stuck on loop, like replay in her brain. And so it's, it's more of a phobia than a disorder, but definitely can trigger some anxious symptoms. And if you live in that fear for too long and you never experience your phobia and get over your phobia, it's debilitating mm-hmm. and it can become, you know, a very serious problem if you don't get some help for it just kind of you're, you're kind of stuck you can't go yeah. forward can't really go backwards you're just kind of stuck in that and fear. you just live in it so what would you say are some steps to take if you feel like they are experiencing something like that like first of all how much is too much and when should you reach out definitely if if it's controlling your everyday life mm-hmm. i think taylor had mentioned that like if it's controlling your everyday life and you feel as though it's debilitating and i can't do this anymore I don't want to live this way anymore. Um, Not actually thinking of taking your life, but to a place of, I I just can't live this way. I can't live in this fear anymore. You, you need to learn how to distract your brain when you feel that fear coming on. How do how can you distract your brain from that fear and redirect your brain? Have a support group, have Mm -hmm. good support around you where you can talk to your friends. Like if I had an irrational fear, I could look at Taylor and tell her my irrational fear. And I know she would look at me and be like, that's, that's not going to happen. Yeah. And, and people who do have these fears of the unknown, if they hear that enough from someone that's reliable, it's like, okay, right. They have to continue to hear that and, and getting help, getting actual professional help 
is going to help you rewire your brain to get off that loop, to get off that yeah. replay of, but I only have this fear. And then that question, but have you ever experienced that fear? Like, has it ever happened? And if the answer is no, what makes you think it's going to happen? Mm-hmm. 80% of the fears we have anyways just don't happen at all. Right. And so when, when we think about that, that's very, it's easy to say that. 80% of the fears you think about never happen at all. That does not make anybody who has a true fear of something say, That's okay, true. great, I'm over yeah. it. Never, it's not going to happen Mm-mm. at all. Um, it takes practice. It yeah. takes getting help. It takes work on the client or the person's part to say, yeah. okay, I'm going to accept mm-hmm. this. I'm going to believe this. And I'm going to let this let this out of my control will I think with like with most things that we've talked about you know whether you come see me or Erica or whoever you might be seeing if you're not going to put in the work once you leave none of it's going to work anyway right so the things that we're you know trying to instill in our clients is yes you know we can talk about it now but when you leave you're the one that has to put in the work you have to be willing to want to change. So whatever your fear is, fear of, you know, maybe not going to college or fear of elevators or whatever it might be, the steps that we give you, you have to be willing to put them into place. And maybe it is going to step on an elevator one day and just seeing what happens. And I know for some people that sounds extreme, but, you know, you've heard the term facing your fears. But if you don't, if you don't at some point do that, you may never get over it. Yeah. Um, and I think as parents too, or even if you have, you know, a younger person, a mentee or whoever in your life, listen to them. Um, if they're talking about, they have certain fears of things. Um, I know some kids, you know, at a certain age might start asking questions about heaven and hell and what's real and what may happen when I die. And for some kids, the thought of, you know, when I die, that can be very debilitating. Um, But if you're able to talk it out with people, just like I was able to, you know, talk it out with my little middle school client and me really just saying like, you've always made straight A's, no matter what grade you go in, if you keep up this work ethic, you're going to do great. Like an alien's not just going to take over your brain one day (laughs) and you're going to forget everything. So, So like Erica said, if you're able to talk it through with somebody, a lot of times if you can talk it out, you may even realize like, dang, I do sound kind of silly. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it may not always be that simple, but if you want to change, put into practice the things that you're learning from your life coach or your therapist, and at some point you may just have to take a step and face your fear to be able to truly get over it. Yeah, and, and also tell yourself every time you've done something and overcome a fear, remind yourself of that. I, I did this today. <laughs> I got on an elevator and went down three flights and it was okay. So every time you overcome a fear, remind yourself of that. I've overcome this once. I'll overcome it again. And every time you may be terrified of that, that fear of the unknown of what might happen. But once you've done it and you remind yourself, I've done this before and it's okay to be afraid of it, but I also know I'm able to overcome it. So every time you do that, you're rewiring that part of your brain that says, oh, wait, Erica, we've done this before. Like, we're okay. We can do it again. And then you get the strength again to do it. And then you have to remind yourself and praise yourself. You know, good job. I'm proud of you. Small wins. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Just taking those baby steps one step at a time. That's right. Well, girls, thank you. Guys, as always, if you need help, please reach out. Don't be afraid to reach out um, to someone local to you, to Erica, to Taylor always here and please reach out with any more um topics you would like to hear us discuss girls amazing as always thank you thank Thank you. you you have been listening to the sweet success podcast with licensed therapist erica wilson and certified life coach taylor posey if you have questions or topics you'd like to have addressed on an upcoming podcast please message erica on facebook at the olive branch counseling center or taylor on facebook at 4031 life coaching and consulting spell out 4031 for more information on erica wilson and all that she offers visit the olive branch counseling center.com 
And for more information about Taylor Posey and her services, visit 4031.org. Spell out 4031. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to our next time together. Please subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform. This podcast is produced by yourpodcastnow.com. Let us produce a podcast for you. 